For today's episode, I want to answer a question that we get asked a lot. When should I power up or evolve my Pokemon? I'm going to go over two different strategies. The first focuses more on efficient Stardust usage and should be sufficient for most Pokemon Go players. The second is a lot more technical and involves calculating Pokemon's IVs so that you can figure out your best Pokemon and maximize their CP. For most players, this first method will be more than good enough. I know it's tempting to start powering up and evolving Pokemon early so you can start competing for gyms, but a little patience goes a long way when it comes to powering up. The idea here is to wait. Wait until you have enough candies to evolve a Pokemon to its final form. For example, Geodude takes 25 candies to evolve to Graveler, and another 100 candies to evolve to Golem. Wait until you have all 125 candies to evolve a Geodude. Let me explain. Let's say you're level 5 when you catch your first Geodude. By level 9, you've caught enough to have 25 candies, so you can evolve one into Graveler. At this point, you'd choose your strongest Geodude, who has about 60 CP. This will get you a Graveler with about 136 CP. Now you need to collect another 100 candies so you can evolve that Graveler into a Golem. Let's say you're level 17 by the time you have enough candies. By this time, you'll have encountered much stronger Geodudes in the wild. If you were to evolve this Geodude with 311 CP, you'd end up with a much stronger Graveler and in turn a much stronger Golem. Of course, both Golems would max out at about the same CP, but one is going to take a lot less Stardust to get there. For Pokemon with no evolutions like Jinx or Hitmonchan, you don't need to save candies to evolve, but you'll also want to hold off on powering them up. Like I said, you'll start seeing stronger versions of these Pokemon in the wild as you level up. Ideally, you'll want to wait until about level 20 to start powering up your Pokemon. At this point, the changes in the wild Pokemon's CP start to diminish as you level up. And, by the time you reach level 30, wild Pokemon won't actually get any stronger beyond that. So to summarize, wait. Wait until you have all the candies necessary to evolve a Pokemon, and wait until you reach higher levels to start powering them up. Now, the second method involves finding your Pokemon with the highest potential, and it's a lot more technical. It's going to involve a lot of talk about Pokemon stats, hidden values, and calculators, so if that doesn't sound interesting to you, you can stop watching now. The truth is, a Pokemon can only be about 10% stronger overall using this method. If you're still here, let's get into it. First of all, let me start by introducing the three hidden stats that Pokemon have in Pokemon Go. They are Attack, Defense, and Stamina. Attack and Defense are involved in calculating damage. I'm not going to get into the details of the damage formula in this episode, but essentially, higher attack means you'll deal more damage, and higher defense means you'll take less damage. Stamina is directly related to a Pokémon's HP. The higher its stamina, the higher its HP will be. A Pokémon's CP is calculated using a formula that includes these three stats. Every species of Pokémon has a base number for each of these three stats. Let's take the current Metakiller Vaporeon, for example. It has 186 attack, 168 defense, and 260 stamina. Every Vaporeon has these same base stats. If you want to see a list of every Pokemon's base stats, I'll put a link to it in the description below. Now on top of base stats, every Pokemon has what's called IVs, or individual values. This is a number from 0 to 15 that gets added to the base stat. These numbers are completely random, and they're different for every single Pokemon you catch. So for example, one Vaporeon could have IVs of 0, 0, and 0 for each of its three stats, while another Vaporeon could have IVs of 15, 15, and 15. In this example, the second Vaporeon stats would all be higher than the first by a value of 15, and at max level, its CP would be higher. So, for this method, you'll be calculating the IVs of your Pokémon so you can choose to evolve and power up the ones with the highest potential stats. To do this, I recommend using this IV calculator from Pokeassistant.com. To show you guys how this works, I'm going to use a few of the Bulbasaurs I caught while shooting yesterday's episode about nests. So, to use the calculator, first you'll want to choose the species of Pokémon that you're looking at, then you'll enter its stats, starting with CP, then HP, and choose the amount of Stardust it takes to power it up. The reason you choose the amount of Stardust is because each Pokémon has a hidden level, and that level is what determines how much Stardust it takes to power a Pokémon up. The final field is whether or not you've powered that Pokémon up before. Then you'll click Find IVs, and the calculator will show you a list of possible combinations that the Pokémon could have. So this Bulbasaur could have any of the possible IV combinations listed here. As the Pokémon's level increases, the calculator gets more accurate and you'll have less possibilities shown. So I want to compare this to some of the other Bulbasaurs that I caught to see which one has the highest IVs.
this Bulbasaur's average IVs are much lower, and you can see under level it lists possibilities of either level 13 or 14. I know that this Bulbasaur is level 13 because when you first capture a Pokemon from the wild, it's an odd number level. Let's look at another Bulbasaur. This Bulbasaur, you can see that it's a higher level because it requires more Stardust, and the calculator is a lot more specific about what its possible IVs are, and it's actually a lot lower than the other two. Let's look at one more. So this Bulbasaur has the highest possible IVs of the four that I've looked at. When you find one like this with potentially high IVs, you can get a more accurate estimate by powering it up a couple times and running it through the calculator again after each time you power it up. So, now that I know which of my Bulbasaurs has the highest IVs, this is the one that I'll keep and power up and evolve once I have enough candies. Keep in mind that because IVs are so small compared to base stats, they don't really make a massive difference in this game. A Pokemon with maximum IVs will only be about 5% stronger than the average Pokemon, and 10% stronger than a Pokemon with zero IVs. I hope that answers any questions you might have had on powering up and evolving Pokemon. If there's anything I didn't cover that you want to know about, go ahead and leave a comment down below, and as always, thank you so much for watching, we'll see you in the next episode. Doesn't seem like I'm going to be able to find too many more Bulbasaurs without actually paying to get onto the course, so instead I'm going to show you guys how you can find nests in your area, and try to find another one nearby so I can go check that out. There's a couple different maps that you can use to find nests in your location. I'm going to show you two right now, one that includes worldwide nests, and one that's a little more detailed but only includes information for the Los Angeles area.